So you found yourself in the fairway. Now I've got an iron here. You might have an iron, a hybrid, or even a fairway wood, and you want to guarantee a more consistent strike. Well, there's something that very few people seem to be aware of when it comes to striking the ball off the fairway consistently. And by the way, it isn't the low point, it's something else. And I gave this to a recent student of mine, who, Mark actually, who would really inconsistent with his ball striking. Now, by the time we'd finished, we made a massive difference to the quality of his strike and the distance that he hits the shots off the fairway. I'm going to share with you exactly what we did because very few people seem to be aware of it. Now, before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. Or at least videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you never have to remember a thing. I'll always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below. Now, if you want to learn how to strike a ball like that, come and have a quick look at this. Now, there's a few things that you need to notice here. Now, the first thing, clearly, look, my ball was positioned in the middle of these two tees. The divot look happens look afterwards. The lowest point of that divot is after the golf ball. Now, you may have heard this before, but there's also one aspect here as well. This divot is quite shallow and this is really, really important. This is something that nobody really pays attention to, but it's key if you want to start to strike any shot, including your hybrids and your woods, off the fairway. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to control, not only just get this divot, this beautiful strike here after the golf ball, but how you control one of the most important things, which is the depth of the divot. That could be the thing that's ruining your ball striking. Let's have a look. So getting you to start striking these more consistently isn't as difficult as you might think, but you need a very simple and logical approach. Now, stay tuned to the end because I've got a, just a, a, a routine that will just take you a few seconds before each shot that I want you to do on the golf course. It will take what we're going to do now and make it so much easier to apply on the course. So let's start with step number one. And this is what I actually gave Mark when he was struggling with strike. He was really, really inconsistent. One minute top it, next minute thin it, then he'd hit a good one. Now, what was happening was ultimately when you swing a golf club here, if you look at this here, I am creating a circle with this golf club, yeah? And it has a low point to that circle. But not just that, the circle, okay, the depth of that circle can move up and down, okay? And this is super, super important, but nobody pays attention to it. Now, what Mark was doing was he was moving up and down huge amount and what that was doing is is the circle therefore was literally going up and down with his swing so one minute he'd top it next minute he'd fat it it was too too inconsistent i've had other students who have their arms moving up and down too much like this and one minute they start like this and then as they come through impact they end up like this okay so they're, again they're changing look the depth that this circle comes through this is one depth and now this is another depth because I'm now starting to bend my arms and they wonder why they're topping it. So the very first thing I want you to do when you get to a golf ball is to pay attention simply to the depth of your arc. Try and control it. Now there are different ways you can do this, but the simplest way is this. And this is what I gave Mark. To give him two things. I got him to get his posture in play and I got him to maintain his height through the shot. I said, Mark, please make a few swings just getting your club to bruise the ground. If you suddenly start to feel like one minute it's skimming the ground, next minute it's going into the ground, pay attention to the height. Don't let your body drop down, okay? So make some swings going backwards and forwards, maintaining, look, your height, and just swing backwards and forwards in a very relaxed way, bruising the ground. The second thing I gave him, I said, look, I'm seeing when you're swinging back here that these arms are starting to spread apart. Well, if they stay spread apart, you're now above the ground. You might even have to dip into the shot. I want you to imagine that these arms, as you're swinging, are kind of almost the same distance apart all the time, look. And when we're doing this, this is gonna help you create and maintain, look, the radius of this circle. If they start to bend up, the radius is gonna come in and we're gonna to top the ball, okay? If you then drop your height, you're gonna fat it. So. Focus on those two things here, backwards and forwards, maintaining height and keeping equidistant. And then I got him to hit a couple of shots. So I got Mark just hitting a few simple shots like that over and over again. Now, it didn't take long for Mark to get great contact very, very quickly. That's all he needed. All he needed was pure depth control and the strike was there. But 
not everyone is that simple. So once you've, if, you know, once you've identified, you know, okay, I'm now controlling your depth, there's the next thing you've got to control, which is where's the low point of the divot itself? Where's the low point of this circle? Because like every single circle here, or arc here, there's a lowest point. Now, luckily with Mark, all we did by raising the depth up, his low point was in, already in a great place, but yours might be a bit behind the golf ball. So even though you're controlling the depth, now you're bruising the ground, you're bruising it a little bit behind the golf ball. This will still lead to a fat shot, okay? But depth is what you control first. And so now look, you do the exercises and you think, oh look, I'm look, I can see my club striking the ground behind the golf ball. So what could we do to get that club bruising the ground, but bruising it ahead of the golf ball? Well, it's just some simple things you can just do as setup. And the first thing I would do is take your golf club, hang it from your sternum and ask yourself, where is it hanging? If it's hanging behind the golf ball, the chances of you hitting the ground behind the golf ball, thinning it on top of it, are pretty likely. Get the club, hang it directly over the top of the golf ball. You might be asking, well, if I was hitting a hybrid or a long iron, the ball's further forward, where does that sternum hang? Well, ultimately, it's still hanging. It's not, now it's hanging a bit more over the back of the golf ball here as opposed to maybe a driver where you want to hit the ball on the way up, we hang it way behind. But to strike a ball off the fairway, we really want to strike the ball in the ground. So we want to try and get it somewhere in the vicinity of that golf ball, super important. The next thing I would do is once I'm there and I put the club down, I want the handle opposite it inside lead thigh and then I grip it. So my hands are slightly ahead because where the club is lowest point of its arc is directly when this lead arm and club line up underneath this lead shoulder. So if we've got already set that angle, we're increasing the likelihood that we're gonna strike the ball, then the ground. Some people set up like this with a candle in the middle and they're already into what I call flicking territory. Now, one funny thing, I went for a lesson recently with a friend of mine, Hugh Marr, who gave me the simplest tip. I, you know, although maybe it was, my strike wasn't majorly inconsistent, it was, could be better. And he gave me a tip to help my ball striking by narrowing my stance. Because when you have a wide stance, as it did with me, it got me actually leaning back and catching a little bit heavy sometimes. By narrowing it, it really helped me stay over the top of the golf ball. So you see, set up can make a real difference. So once you've got set up and you've got an idea of depth, what about the swing? Well, I promised you I'd give you something to do for five seconds before each and every shot off the fairway. Well, here's something that is really, really simple. All I want you to do is this, it's logical approach to striking better. Before each shot, what I'd like you to do is this. I'd like to make some swings based on what we've talked about, controlling your depth, paying attention. So I there hit the top blades of the grass. I haven't hit the base of any soil yet. There we go. Now I've got my depth. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at now, I've got my depth, where's the location of where the club is striking the ground relative to my ball? If I start seeing grass popping up behind the golf ball here, I'm gonna now start moving my body forwards to start striking that ball, then the ground. If I start moving forwards and start to go deep again, I know I've done something wrong, so I'm just spending a few seconds, look, paying attention to the depth and the location of that club grounding. That is it, I promise you, that is it. Now, once I've got that feeling, I'll simply just walk to the golf ball, won't waste any time, and just rip it, just like that. Ball, turf, strike. Get that simple sensation into your game, okay? Keep those arms close together, can I focus on controlling your height and then pay attention to where that club is, not only grounding, but how it's grounding relative to that golf ball. I promise you, this will really, really help. It's super, super, super simple. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends who's struggling with shots off the fairway. And do me a favor, look, if you want a video specifically on this with the hybrids and the woods, please check this one out right here. I've also put a free download practice guide in the description box below here and of course look if you're new to the channels from your first videos please consider subscribing it's completely free to do so but until next week have a wonderful golfing week